Harry Boo. Koren tomme bilitisa. Hei asita hadi sama. Kumbuka hei. Kilamatu apendei kedogo pia atavuna kedogo. Nayule apanla kwa ukarimu pia atavuna kwa ukarimu. Mongu anapenda mutoaji wa moyo wa konjufu. Bienvenue, 2 Corinthiens 9, verset 6 et 7. Rappelez-vous ceci. Celui qui s'aime avec parcimonie moissonnerait aussi avec parcimonie et celui que se meurt généreusement moissonnerait aussi généreusement. Dieu aime les donateurs enthousiastes. Thanks to all of those of you who have been able to carry on paying your tithes and your offerings during this very difficult time. Difficult physically, difficult financially, um, but some of you are still managing and it's very much appreciated. Unfortunately, even though the church is not being used, the bills don't stop coming in. Thankfully, we do have a words of encouragement from the Apostle Paul. He tells us in 2 Corinthians 9, and verses 6 and 7, and I've summarized them. He says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. For God loves the cheerful giver. Well, Maureen is doing much better. She's uh, recovering now from this diverticulitis. Uh, she's eating. Uh, she's able to move about. She does have to stay where she is in, in the home where she lives for 12 weeks. But uh, she's certainly feeling much better. And it looks like we still won't be able to meet as a church for a few more weeks, possibly at the beginning of July. But thanks again to all of you who are maintaining contact with others, others who are isolated or lonely or feeling a bit worried. I know when we have our prayer meetings, no matter what's happening in our streets, in our town, in our country or even around the world, we remind ourselves that God is in control. Uh, a list of the 42 streets around both Berry and Whitefield churches has been put on the Metro Christian Centre very official Facebook page. And we really, really want you to saturate these streets with your prayers. There will be many needy people in these streets. And as people realise just how delicate life really is, that their only true hope is in Jesus Christ. It's not in Boris Johnson, it's, it's not in, in uh, Donald Trump or Vladimir Putin or Xi Jinping, but Jesus Christ. He is our only hope. He is their only hope. And if you know anyone personally who lives in these streets, well, pray especially for them. So please look through the list. Uh, choose one or more streets if you, uh, if you want to do that. Uh, you can pray for them. Pray also for Jill Mallon. A lot of the children who attend uh, Little Acorns, they live in the streets around the Bury Church. And uh, Jill is expecting to open on June 1st. But I'm not sure, she's not sure if the parents are going to want to send their children to Little Acorns. And if they do send them to Little Acorns, there will be new safety guidelines, new legislation due to come into effect. So it's making it into a real dilemma, a real problem for Jill. So if you can pray for Jill, that God will give her clear guidance, give her a clear head and surround him with his strength and his love. There's still no one in attendance at church, but if you want to contact us, the best way is always through group leaders or direct if you've got our numbers and 
email addresses and stuff like that. Uh, the leadership team, team were still meeting on Friday nights via Zoom. And the list of topics, prayer topics, is put on the MCC Berry website on Fridays. And don't forget church online Sunday mornings from 10 a.m. Where you can virtually join on, join in. Uh, but they're also available thereafter for a few weeks if you want to watch again or you want to catch up if you've missed any. Thank you for the feedback for these sermons and the Bible studies which we've shown. That's it for now. May the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. church it's great to be together again for another Sunday service at Metro Christian Center and um, just to further what Derek was saying yeah we just uh, really believe that you know we we care for our community as a church and and right now you know it's a really difficult time for people and um, we're not able to be physically present um, due to the the situation right now but um, what we've done for those that were not able to get the notice last week um, we are doing a pray for a street or adopt a street scheme, if you like. So what we are doing is we are asking people from the church um, to take on a street to pray for, either in Bury or in Whitefield, um, and to commit to pray for those during this time. Now, um, we've really had some great responses. Lots of people have taken streets. Um, there are still some Berry streets left. They will come up on your screen now. Um, so if you would like to take one of those and pray for them, um, then that would be great. Just let me know so that I know um, which streets have been taken, so I know which ones um, I still need to get cover for. Um, also, Metro Christian Centre Whitefield, um, we are praying for the, ch for the streets around um, the church that we have there. Um, we've probably got half of the streets filled up right now with people praying for them. Um, and so, guys from Berry, if you would be willing to also pray for a street from Whitefield, then just let me know so that we can give you a street there. They should also come up on the screen now, the ones that are still available. Um, so if you are able to also commit to pray for one of those, that would be great too. Now, I know it can be a little bit daunting um, if you've never done anything like this before um, to kind of say, well, what do I need to do? What do I need to pray? Um, and so don't worry about that side of things. Um, what I'm going to do is over the next few weeks, I'll, I'll be in touch with different ways that we can pray for our streets and different areas or, or schemes that we can um, pray for specifically because um, we are trying to be strategic with it. So don't feel like you're going to take a street and then you're not going to know how to pray for it. We will follow up and, and we'll keep things uh, moving there. If you are responsible for someone who um, is not able to access these Sunday services and so isn't getting this message, if you would be able to pass on this message and invite them to please join us, um, they are also more than welcome to choose a street to pray for. Again, if you can just feed back to me so that I know which streets still need cover. Okay, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, we are now going to have a kids' life talk from Katie Jenkinson. Then we are going to go into a time of worship, followed by our message this morning from Peter Nixon. Okay, thanks, guys. Be blessed. Hope you enjoy the service. Hi everyone, welcome to Kids Life. I hope you're all well, I hope you're all happy and I hope you're all being good for your families. I miss you all lots and lots and I can't wait to see you all again really soon. So today we're gonna to hear more of our story from Jeremiah. Um, it's a story about how Jeremiah finds himself in a bit of a tricky situation, but how God uses his friend to save him. So today's story is all about a guy called a Bedmelech. So I am no longer going to be Katie. I'm going to tell you the story as if I was a Bedmelech. Okay. Ready for the transformation? Ooh. So hi everyone. My name is a Bedmelech. I am a servant of King Zedekiah's palace. 
King Zedekiah did not like Jeremiah telling everyone what God had said. He let Jeremiah be put into a well, a well full of squishy mud. I knew that this was wrong and that God would not be happy. I went to the king and said, it isn't fair. Jeremiah is God's messenger. He hasn't done anything wrong. So the king said, take some soldiers and pull him out. I called the soldiers and we went to the well. The soldiers had ropes, but they were rough and scratchy. I tied some soft rags around the ropes. We threw them into the well and pulled Jeremiah out. Jeremiah was very muddy, but he was safe. I'm glad I could help Jeremiah, aren't you? Wow, thank you so much for that story, Ebed Melech. That was a great story all about how Jeremiah was thrown into a well for telling everybody about what God had said to him. Now, God sent Ebed Melech, Jeremiah's friend, to look after him, to help him. And God wants to look, look after us all. And he sends us all special people to look after us all the time. Can you think of somebody now who helps you? or somebody that's helping you with all of these things that are going on. Maybe it's a teacher who's sending you work. Maybe it's uh, um, your mummy or your daddy, or maybe your grandparents are sending you some nice things through the post. Whoever it might be, God sends loads and loads of people to help us and to help us through really tricky situations like Jeremiah was in the bottom of that well, all full of squishy mud. Do you know what? Wouldn't it be nice if we could say thank you to those people? I bet Jeremiah was very, very thankful to his friend for getting him out of that well. Well, you know what, guys? This morning, your challenge while the grown-ups are listening to the sermon is I would like you to either draw or write a little thank you card for all the people that help you. It could just be for one person. It could be for... Um, a teacher that you're particularly missing at school that helps you a lot. It could be for your mum or for your dad or for a grandparent or for whoever. But wouldn't it be nice just to say thank you? If you're lucky enough to live next door to a doctor or a nurse or someone like that, you could send them a thank you card for saying thank you for looking after everybody while everything is going on at the moment with the coronavirus. So draw yourself some nice pictures, a little thank you card, write a letter. I'm sure your grown-ups will help you with that and then you can post it. And remember, guys, that God wants to help us and look after us and he sends all sorts of people to do that. Carry on being kind to each other. Carry on remembering to say your prayers and uh, remember that God is in control of everything and that he is looking after you. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Good morning, church. This morning for worship, uh, we are doing the song Waymaker and Val is going to be leading that for us. Uh, Deb, some backing vocals. I'm doing a little bit of guitar on it. But uh, I have one of the verses that God's been giving me a lot in this time is that with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And that's what we believe. And that's what we want to celebrate and focus on in this song Waymaker that declares that, that God is a waymaker. He's a promise keeper. He's our light in the darkness. So let's just meditate on that truth in this time of worship that, you know what, that some things with man, it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible.
worship you. I worship you. Everybody say, Rainmaker, limit the one, the promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are the Rainmaker, limit the one, the promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is I worship you, I worship you. Morning everybody, hope you're all keeping very well. And sending you all our greetings from what was earlier this morning, a very sunny Prestwich. Bye. It's... Um, our house group's turn to share with you this morning on um, a passage that uh, has really been on my heart as we've been going through this time of, of lockdown and this time of coronavirus. Um, and a phrase that's kept cropping up is this phrase, unprecedented times. It's also being talked about as being anxious times, crazy times. But I think the word that struck me most is, is that word, unprecedented. We're living through times that we've never experienced before in our lifetime. But in the history of our world, we're not the only ones who've, who've actually used a phrase like that. Over 2,800 years ago, there was a king who lived and reigned over Judah by the name of Jehoshaphat. Um, and he wasn't too bad a king when you compare him with some of the other kings that had preceded him and the ones that followed him. But one day he received some news that turned his world upside down and it struck fear and anxiety throughout Judah. It led to unprecedented times. War had been declared by some of his enemies and they were already marching out to fight against him. How he reacted and how, he, how we react to unprecedented times is crucial in our spiritual formation and growth. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verses 3 and 4 we read, Jehoshaphat was alarmed by this news and sought the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. They were alarmed, they were terrified, they were anxious, they were uncertain and so they sought the Lord and they began to fast. And Beth's going to read now the rest of the story so that we can find out what happened next. 
The reading is taken from 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verses 5 to 24. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. O our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honour your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity, such as war, plague or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honoured. We can cry out to you to save us and you will hear us and rescue us. And now see what the armies of Amon, Moab and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt, so they went around them and did not destroy them. Now see how they reward us, for they have come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are, but we are looking to you for help. As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives and children, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. He said, Listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find it, you will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jerul. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshipping the Lord. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets and you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendour. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord, his faithful love endures forever. At that very moment, they began to sing and give praise. The Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir to start fighting amongst themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. Thank you, Beth. There are five things I'd like us to, to stop and think about as we um, talk for a few minutes now about this passage that, that Beth's just read for us. Um, I've already said that the, the theme of this morning is take a stand. And the first thing I'd, I'd like to, to bring before us is that we should take a stand and pray. Now, I know that's, that's quite a straightforward and a, a, a simple thing to say. Um, and it's something that I'm sure we're all doing. There's been a great resurgence in uh, prayer um, throughout our nation, not just in, in our own lives, hopefully, but throughout our nation, and throughout our local church, as we know it, in Bury and in Whitefield. Pete Gregg, who's the, the founder of 24-7 Prayer, wrote this last weekend about a prayer surge happening nationally. He talked about research which was commissioned by Tear Fund and released on May the 3rd, which indicated that some three million new people have turned to prayer in the UK since lockdown began. The online British bookstore Eden has reported a 55% increase in sales of Bibles in April and demand for prayer resources that 24-7 prayer produce 
has been going through the roof. In these un unprecedented times, in the times that Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah faced, the first thing that they began to do was to take a stand and pray. And that's what I'm encouraging us to do this morning, that in these unprecedented times, we need to stand and pray. Jehoshaphat, in verse 5, stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard in the temple of the Lord, and he prayed. Secondly, I want us to encourage us to take a stand and to pray together. In verse 12, we read, O oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. It's an awful feeling, isn't it, when you feel powerless, when you feel vulnerable, when you feel anxious. And I'm sure we've all had those feelings over the past week, even just when we've gone out to the shops um, to do our, our regular shopping. Are we safe going out? Are we safe doing the various things that perhaps we take for granted so often? Um, we don't know what to do. This is an unseen, in, invisible to our naked eyes virus, which is uh, attacking and has killed so many across our nation. And the call is to prayer. Lord, we don't know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. Do we feel powerless? Don't we know what to do? Are we looking to God for help? I'm sure the answer that's coming from from all of us is yes, we are looking to the Lord for help. And in verse 13, it says, all the men of Judah stood before the Lord. They took their stand. And it says that they stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children. And that really speaks to me of the whole community coming together. And as we share together this morning, it's about the whole community of us as the people of God in Whitefield and in Bury coming together and joining together in prayer to the Lord our God. But how can we do this when we're apart? How can we do this when we can't actually be together? Well, I think the great thing about prayer is that even when we're physically distanced, even when we're physically not able to be together, we can through the power of God and through joining together in prayer, we can be together. Um, we have prayer points which are shared on the Facebook page on Fridays. We have WhatsApp groups which are encouraging prayer. We have Zoom meetings which have, who knew what they were a few weeks ago. But we have Zoom meetings which have been dedicated to prayer, praying with each other. We, we were introduced to this Pray For Our Streets initiative last weekend. And many of us have already signed up to pray for the streets around our local churches in Whitefield um, and in Bury. And we've been encouraged, as Ben has shared with us in recent weeks, that we should pray together strategically for what God wants to do in our midst. Take a stand and pray together. If perhaps you want more help with any of those things that I've just mentioned, then please do contact the leadership of the church do contact through the WhatsApp groups. If you're not part of one of those WhatsApp groups, then, then please make an effort to join up. The third thing I'd like to bring out from this story is that we're, we're, we're to take a stand and be still. In verse 15, we read these words. Listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. And this was Jehaziel who brought the word of the Lord to the people of God at that time. The people of God stood and they waited and they listened and they were still. And the word of God through the prophet of God, Jehaziel, was brought to them. Carrying on in verse 15, this is what the Lord says. So in answer to their prayers, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them, but you won't even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. 
He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. I don't know how you feel about being still and waiting and listening. They're not the easiest of things to do. We get so easily distracted um, by so many things which normally go on in our lives from day to day. That mobile phone, uh, you may have heard mine just uh, um, making a noise, and I'm sorry about that. I should have put it in a different room. But anyway, that's the way it is. We, we do get easily distracted, and it's so, so hard sometimes just to wait and to listen, to be still and hear what God is saying. For many of us, this lockdown has been a, a great opportunity to practice being still, to practice waiting, to train ourselves to listen to what the Lord is saying, to spend time reading our Bibles and, and praying. For some of us, that's been the case. For, other, for others of us, our regular daily routine has been badly disrupted. For those with children at home all day, for those who are key workers out and about, it's so much harder to find that time to find that space when you can stand or sit and be still and to wait and to listen and to hear the word of the Lord. But this is what the people of God did in those days. And this is what I would encourage us, it's what I encourage myself to do, to take a stand, to be still, to wait. When we wait on the Lord, the scripture said, we renew our strength. We mount with wings as eagles, we run and we're not weary, and we walk, and, we're not, and we don't faint. Fourthly, take a stand and praise. The people at this time heard the word of God through Jehaziel the prophet. And when we've heard from God, when a prophetic word is given, when it's received, when it's believed, the response from our heart should always be to, to stand and to praise the Lord, or perhaps in some cases, as the people did here, some of them bowed before the Lord and praised and worshipped. In verses 18 and 19, we read, Then King Jehos Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshipping the Lord. That's the response to what they'd heard from God. In verse 19, then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Um, it's good to praise the Lord quietly. It's good also to praise the Lord with a loud shout. And especially when we've prayed, when we've prayed strategically, when we've sought the Lord, when we've asked him for his direction and guidance, then when we hear from him and we know that it's a word from God, and it's the time to stand, to take a stand, and to praise the Lord our God. Which begs the question, what's God saying to us at this time as church? What is it that he is revealing to us? What is it that he is showing us? What guidance is it that he's giving to us? How will we change when we emerge from this season of coronavirus into what many are saying will be the new normal? Or will we change at all? Let's be open to hear from God, to hear the prophetic voice, to share together what God is saying to us and to move forward in God with renewed confidence. And then finally, take a stand and stand firm. Led by King Jehoshaphat and the worship team, the people of God responded to the guidance, to the direction, to the word of God uh, that they'd heard through the prophet Jehaz Jehaziel. And it says in verse 20, early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jer Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. 
And they did. They responded to the, what God had said and to what Jehoshaphat was encouraging them to do. And notice the order. It says, first of all, they believed the word that God had given them. When we hear the, the word of God, when we hear a prophetic word from God, we need to believe what God is saying. Only then will, be, will we be able to, to stand firm on that word. And as this verse says to us, believe in his prophets and you will succeed. There's nothing wrong with success. God wants success for us as church. How we measure that is, is perhaps op open to discussion. But what God wants to do for us is to prosper us, to prosper us as we believe his word, as we stand firm on his word and, in, and as we go ahead and do whatever he tells us to do. So in these unprecedented times, stand and pray, stand together, stand and be still, stand and praise and stand firm. I think the Apostle Paul said something similar, and I'll close with this, because he says in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, he says, a final word. Now, this is my final word this morning. A final word, Ephesians 6 verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armour so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armour, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground. All that to say, stand and pray. Stand together. Stand and be still. Stand and praise. Stand firm. The grace of God and the peace of God be with us all. Amen.